Uh, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I welcome our guests here this evening and those watching on cable. The first item on our agenda is the proclamation of North Reading Dollars for Scholars. Mrs. Manapelli, we have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to proclaim the week of March 5 through 9, 2017 to be North Reading Dollars for Scholars Week and to read the proclamation. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Anthony, you want to read it or you want me to read it? The proclamation, whereas North Reading Dollars for Scholars is a group of hardworking, dedicated individuals, and whereas North Reading Dollars for Scholars have devoted both time and talent to the difficult task of seeking scholarship funds for deserving students, and whereas North Reading Dollars for Scholars is planning its annual phone-a-thon for the week of March 5th through 9th, 2017, where high school students will contact all North Reading homes by telephone seeking pledges to the North Reading Dollars for Scholars Scholarship Fund. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of North Reading, do hereby proclaim the week of March 5th through 9th, 2017 as North Reading Dollars for Scholars Week and urge all citizens to open their hearts and their purses to the benefit of North Reading students who want to continue their education. Thank you. Is there anyone here for public comment? Oh. Yeah. I'm the president. What? Oh, the no, she's president. No, no, she's oh, president. Oh. Okay. But no. Does she want to say anything? Yeah, yeah, about the scholar, dollars yeah, for Scholars. Yeah, she wants to make a pitch for the Dollars for Scholars. Oh. Please. No, I just appreciate your support. Come up and say it, Ken. You got to make the pitch so you, people will give. <laughs> we have very, we have very high ratings here on people who watch. <laughs> <laughs> so you better and take uh, advantage of it. Uh, <laughs> cable, uh, cable viewers <laughs> now can hear you. Hi, I'm Kathy Achavati, and I'm the president of the Dollars for Scholars, and we do appreciate your support in our endeavor when we make the phone calls next week. Is there any dollar amount you are looking for in particular? Last year we raised $23,000. How many scholarships did you give out? We did 12 post-grad and we did 28 high schools. That's great. Mm -hmm. So That's will fun. you it's accept nice any kids. donation amount? Yes, we do. However, we small or large? We all through the year. That's great. Not I just think next it's week. Unlimited, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the blank check will be your fine. Envelopes. <laughs> the blank check. Uh, uh, I, I do have a. Uh, thank you for all you, you guys do, first of all. Um, uh, second of all, just to make sure, because I think sometimes there's some confusion, it's for any senior student in North Reading. They, they, do, do they can they go to the private schools? Yes. Yes, they can be home, they can be home, home We school. also do a postgraduate, which is for anyone that's in college that we take back their transcripts and then we evaluate and select 10 or 12 scholarships right. for that also. Okay. Yeah, so they it, really can do it for five years almost. Right, because it's, it's important for the uh, 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 general public to know that you don't have to just go to North Reading High School that uh, they can they can be uh, from private school they can be homeschooled and, and so and on. most of the guidance counselors at the private schools know that I'm sorry most of the grad the um, guidance counselors at the private schools know that okay good I want the students to know it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mr. chairman I just want to acknowledge again uh, as I have in years past that uh, you know my wife and I and, and my sons have benefited uh, uh, from the Dollars from Scholars, uh, Dollars for Scholars uh, campaigns in the past when the boys were going to, uh, uh, to college and it was certainly great, greatly appreciated and I would urge everybody in the community to uh, answer the phone. Thank you. Open the checkbook and, uh, and help out the future generations of North Reading. 
So it's, uh, again, greatly appreciated from years past, and uh, again, uh, give generously. Just another example of our volunteers make the community what it is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Kev. Okay, anyone else for public comment? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Jane Krieger, 22 Cherry Street. I live in Eisenhower Pond Park. And we have been um, trying to um, really just clean up some of the plans from that transaction. And in that is um, widening Maple Road so that it's safe. And uh, there's one building permit that has not been issued. And I uh, called um, Attorney Latham who had represented Mr. Smith at that time, and asked them if we could have the house set back so that we can widen the road. And I had said if he had any questions to contact the uh, town administrator. So I, I think that was about um, a week ago. So I'm just here to follow up to see if um, that you heard from him or uh, the, our legislatures have been very helpful in you know, getting the ball rolling so that we can sort of clean up you know, the things that need to be done. So uh, you look, uh, has, have you heard from him? I, I can Mr. check Gilbert, with, huh? through you, Mr. Chairman. I can check with the staff in the office. I've not spoken directly with Mr. Latham, but that doesn't mean that he hasn't contacted uh, somebody else in the office or in the town hall. Okay, and we so could update what you tomorrow. process should um, we take to, I had said I would, Red Municipal Light has been participating as well, and I had said we would kind of coordinate it just so to keep things moving. Um, it sounds like the next step would be for uh, myself or, or the appropriate Maybe person. Maybe to talk to the planning administrator? Uh, I think to talk with Attorney Latham first. And take a look at those plans. After speaking with Attorney Latham, yes. Okay. I did speak with the building inspector's office, and that um, permit has not been issued yet. And um, I don't know if there's a road plan or not for Juniper as well. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with particular plans for Juniper. I, I'm aware generally of some discussions relative to, to Maple Road. Okay. Well, thank you. I just wanted an update. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Does it, do you have a number? Good evening, everyone. Name and address. So I am uh, Peter Kane. I'm the NREA vice president. I'm also the IAC representative for the NREA. And I just wanted to chat with you guys a little bit before you made your decisions about insurance uh, later. Uh, and real quick, uh, I see she left, but as a teacher at North Reading, I would say I'd certainly have seen the value of dollars for scholars firsthand. So just thought I'd put that out there before I get going. Uh, but I'm happy for the Excuse opportunity. Excuse me, Peter. Yes. Just for one second, please. If he's going to talk about uh, in health insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay. I oh, he's just making, I don't know. This is a public comment. Okay. Public comment. Sorry, Peter. So thanks. So consistently provided high-level health care with costs that are affordable and direct is a popular topic. Increasingly, we're asked to view health care as a right rather than as a privilege, potentially. Uh, certainly more than an entitlement, certainly more than a drag on revenue. Uh, within that vein, the town of North Reading, like all municipalities in Massachusetts, has the statutory obligation to provide a significant amount of the health insurance premiums of its employees. Regardless of law, though, I have little doubt uh, that you, Selectment and the town administration has uh, has no reluctance and indeed takes great pleasure in providing us uh, with excellent health care. Uh, in so doing, you create a healthy and happy collection of employees that are able to deliver excellent services to the people of North Reading, people who are sometimes their neighbors. These healthy and happy employees contribute significantly to the perception and realities of North Reading as a town worth living in, a town with generally high property values, an expected standard of living and the townsfolk that will contribute with a full understanding that happiness sometimes requires fiscal investment. A town within which you have chosen to live and participate. This does not, does not seem a place that would cast the health care of its employees as anything less than a normal and natural obligation to the sex, successful operation of a town. I am under no illusory belief that the health care premiums do not consume a large part of the town's budget. However, this is not a new trend. It is a part of the reality of doing business the way business is expected to be done. Saying it is expensive is an empirical fact and does nothing to remedy itself, nor does it make any argument any more forceful. 
The fact that budgetary numbers have already been tossed out to affect our sentiments does little to impact the task before us. We can furrow our brows and nod our heads when the figures are presented. We can look very serious when the numbers are projected via PowerPoint by the agency hired by the town. But because the impact of health care comes as no surprise, arguments for sacrifice on the part of those shareholders most intimately involved, namely the town employees, become dulled and muted. The town administration and selectmen make financial decisions and oversee discretionary spending. To such decision makers, the reality of budgetary constraints is just that. Within such reality, obligations are met first and then optional choice-based expenditures are made. Insurance premiums are an obligation. The well-being of town employees is an obligation. Shifting more of the burden onto town employees is a choice. Modifying existing levels of care is a choice. Disincentivizing the use of health care is a choice. Lowering premiums but increasing out-of-pocket costs is a choice. Asking people to pay more when they are sick is a choice. None of those choices demonstrate responsibility, however, or faithfulness to the heart of the obligation. The desire to avoid the invocation of 2123 has been stated more than once, and I hope that such ple pledges have been genuine. Fidelity in this instance would indicate the good faith of the town towards its employees and would bolster its claim of our value. Ultimately, though, and quite simply, the town should not need to manage its budget at the expense of its promises to and well-being of existing and past town employees. We will soon determine what is best for the employees of the town through discussions later this week. It's nice to be able to participate in negotiations. Certainly much nicer than having decisions made for us and our retirees via executive session. It is unfortunate that we've had to do this for consecutive years after contract negotiations. Unfortunately that we get caught in the middle both here and during those salary negotiations as the different town administrative bodies use our salaries and health care to bounce around between us. But we have steps that will lead us forward, in particular, the provision for two days, allowing us until next Monday to come to some conclusions is helpful. These are complicated numbers, and we do not need to feign expertise or immediate understanding in order to meet a manufactured timeline, nor do we need to ignore the fact that we are talking about a sizable number of people across all the departments of the town that must be happy enough to reach unanimity. Such a task should not be rushed. We look forward to a conversation that recognizes the value and the humanity of town employees. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item on our agenda, minutes. Thank you. From February, regular session, February 6th. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the February 6, 2017 regular session minutes as written. Second. Second by Mr. You. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. We also have executive sessions for the same date. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the February 6, 2017 executive session minutes as written. I'm not sure I, I can second that because did you talk about health care then? I'll second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, and I right. abstain. We have um, someone abstaining? Yes, no, I'm abstaining. Mr. Yule has I, abstained. Okay. How about, hold on one second. Okay. Because I wasn't there, so I have to abstain, but you took the minutes, so you were actually present. Was, okay, then I have the wrong minutes. I apologize. So, so I apologize for that. I mix it up. So, so these are for you want to clarify the vote? I made the motion. Yes. I, heard him. I made the motion. I heard him. Mr. O'Leary seconded. Mr. O'Leary seconded. I apologize. I'm just going to ask yeah, you to vote again. You took the <laughs> minute, so you were. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. O'Leary. Your vote. All right, two abstentions. No, I, I can say oh, I. I can, I can say I. That, that can I apologize for that. I, I wasn't there, so I need to abstain. I abstain. All right. <laughs> But you the took the, the minute, so. Yeah, the vote's the same, it's who did it. <laughs> Four unanimous in favor, one is abstaining. The next item on our agenda is to vote and sign the discharge release of 270 Main Street, Unit 19. 
Mr. So Gilbert. Just O'Leary. O'Leary, okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we provided some information that was provided by the Housing Authority. I know Maureen is here this evening to give us an overview as to uh, the nature of the request. Uh, I'll do my best to summarize, but if you want to come up to the, uh, the podium to maybe give a, a better description and answer any questions, that might be helpful, Maureen. Um, Thank effectively, you. there is a, it was a pre-existing affordability restriction to which the town was a party on two units owned by the Housing Authority in condominium complexes here in town. The Housing Authority is preparing to go forward with renovations on one of those units, which is the unit that's before us, uh, 270 Main Street, unit number 19. There will be a second one, I'm told, as well, forthcoming down the road, but right now the focus is on this particular unit. Um, there was an affordability restriction in place that dated back to the early to mid-2000s. 2002. <coughs> it's expired, as I understand it. It is. a 10-year restriction under the program in which the uh, unit was, uh, was it renovated or acquired under the home program? Uh, I guess I'll turn it, it over purchased. to Maureen. Yeah, I can, um, I'm Maureen Hickey, the Executive Director of the North Reading Housing Authority. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, we own two condo units in town. This one we're talking about at 270 Main Street. It's a one-bedroom unit. We purchased it in 2002. We used the town's home funds to make a down payment on the mortgage, um, and therefore it had an affordability restriction on it, and that was for 10 years. So it expired in 2012. Um, what we're doing right now is the unit's vacant and we want to renovate it, so we're trying to borrow some money from the bank, only $15,000 so that we can paint it, new carpets and things, and we can get it re-rented. But in order to do that, we need to discharge this um, home fund loan back from November 15, 2002. Um, we have talked, I talked to uh, Mike and Danielle McKnight about making it affordable again. I guess there's a program called the LIP program. I talked to folks at Department of Housing and Community Development as well, DHCD. Um, and we will look into, you know, if it's possible for us to get this back on the town's subsidized housing inventory. Um, if we can, we will. Um, but that's, you know, first we need to get it rented and renovated. Um, and so I'm here to ask you tonight, we need the chairman of the board to sign the discharge papers and has to be notarized. Any questions? Yeah. Mr. O'Leary. Um, so the housing authority is going to retain ownership. Mm -hmm. And there's a potential that it's not affordable? <laughs> no, we <laughs> always, we I, don't I rent it. We, it well, right. we don't rent it for more than the Section 8 payment standard. We keep it within the affordable rent. Um, usually we do have a tenant that has a Section 8 voucher we have in the past that lived in the unit. But as far as the town subsidized housing inventory, which is your count from the state, from right. DHCD, they're not, our units aren't in that inventory anymore since this 10-year restriction expired. Can we place another deed restriction on it, do you know? Can we look into that, Where, whereby we can voluntarily I don't know. Uh, we just started talking about no. this, so I do think there are some options that we can look but into to make it, you know, affordable again. We did look into borrowing home funds again to do the renovations. We probably got about three quarters of the way through the process and uh, decided it really wasn't going to work out for us. Um, and Danielle was very helpful, Danielle McKnight. Um, so we've been in touch. She's familiar with what we have, um, and certainly our board is interested in making them affordable again, or as far as those that's numbers. both of them, the other one also? The other one too, the other one's the same exact story. So we'll probably be before you again to discharge that loan at some point in the future as well, as we decide what to do with the program. I mean, we're n we don't make any money on it, we just have the two units, right. um, so that's where we are. And I'm, I apologize for my board members, none of them could come tonight, which is very rare. Um, it's okay. <laughs> Everybody's busy. Yeah. <coughs> Normally, though, I would thought we would have Any some. other questions from Marie? Mr. Chairman, through you, I just would note that the Housing Authority, Maureen in particular, has been very responsive to some questions that we've had, both Danielle and I. So I want to thank you for your responsiveness and sending us the information that you gave us. I also want to recognize Danielle for her efforts, but also the Office of uh, Housing that we are a partner with Reading and some other communities on, which has helped us through this process as well. Any other? Questions? Will you come back when it, you're, you're um, finished with the renovations to ask us for any more permissions in terms of sale? I don't think that we need to come back and ask for any more permissions, but I could come back and give you an update. What we're going to look for, though, is to try to make it affordable again. 
we want to keep it, obviously. We want to keep it, we want to keep it, you know, with a low rent. We're trying not to sell them. That's why we wanted to borrow money from the bank, um, you know, do a little work to renovate them. <coughs> but there is, there is a possibility to use a different program that could get it back on the subsidized housing inventory um, without borrowing home funds again. Home funds are very heavily regulated. And it really didn't seem like a good fit for us. We're a very small office. Appreciate your efforts to keep them affordable. I think it's important. Well, we're trying. Um, yeah. And we only have 44 units from the state. I don't know if anyone's familiar with what else we have. We have 40 units at PBD Court for elderly and disabled. They're all one bedroom units. And we have four family units up on Swan Pond Road, two duplexes, and we have 22 Section 8 vouchers. A little bit of everything. And we could use a lot more. <laughs> we could use more. Quite a bit more. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Now you'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize the chairman to sign the discharge and release for 270 Main Street, Unit 19. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Thank you. I thought I did that. <laughs> Are you ready, Mrs. Manapelli? We can entertain a motion to sign the ABCC seasonal estimate. Mr. Chairman, I move to sign the ABCC 2017 senior seasonal estimate form. Second. Second by Mr. Yule. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Next item on our agenda is to discuss the March special town meeting. Mr. Gilbert. Mr. Chairman, we place this item on the agenda to provide the board an opportunity to have any discussion it wished to have and to provide an update relative to the planning process for the town meeting scheduled for March 13th. The warrant article hearing has uh, been submitted to the newspaper to be advertised for next Monday, March 6th at 8 o'clock p.m. Um, certainly, Selectman Prisco is the board's liaison to the Community Planning Commission to provide any further update. but. The Planning Commission heard the five zoning-related articles last Tuesday evening, right. uh, four of which related to the Berry property, and th those four were recommended by the Planning Commission. And then the, there was an additional article relative to the prohibition on recreational marijuana sales, which the Planning Commission indicated that it would make a recommendation at town meeting on. Relative to the Arthur Kenny Field project, we uh, haven't, that, that's the remaining article for the project, and we've spoken with the chair of the athletic facility subcommittee as well as the architect involved and they are in the, the design development phase and we expect further refined cost estimates to be presented to the athletic facility subcommittee at a meeting this coming Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Mr. Prisco, you were going to comment? <coughs> yeah, ju I'm just going to comment on the recreational marijuana warrant article. That was probably the longest discussion item that we had that evening, I got the sense that the majority of the CPC members wanted to try to get the Board of Selectmen to consider putting an 18-month moratorium on that and hold off on voting that warrant article, maybe pass over it, to let the 18 months go by to see what happens with the legislation, uh, particularly the chairman, Mr. Pierce. He felt that when we did that with the medical marijuana, things turned out pretty good for us. We learned a lot but while we were under our moratorium. And he feels pretty strongly, and so do a few of their other members, feel pretty strongly that if we do the same, we take the same approach, put in an 18-month <coughs> moratorium, and hold off on that warrant article, we can always try to execute that warrant article at, at a June town meeting or an October town meeting that is coming up. Uh, but in the meantime, he thought it would be a, a suggestion he'd like everyone to consider. So I'll leave that up to the chairman if you want to discuss it any further. I have to say it first. Kate and I, we both were there. Um, we made it pretty clear that the board wanted to do this and that if they weren't prepared to do it, then the Board of Selectmen were, were prepared to take it away from them and that we would sponsor the uh, article on town meeting floor. But I, you know, I've, I've thought about it since that meeting and you know, I think they may have some 
you know, have a good idea there for us to consider. I don't think it hurts us by executing the 18 month moratorium and then be prepared though, if we don't kind of like what we're here, what's coming out of the legislation, that we go ahead and execute that warrant article at the June town meeting or an October town meeting. Okay, to be clear, me. just so that, and I know you mentioned this to me, but basically the recommendation of the, uh, at least what the CPC has come up with and what you're proposing this evening is we pass over the article, the zoning article on recreational marijuana. I'm not recommending Place it in at the June town meeting with a monitor. No, I'll leave. Yeah, I'm sorry. No. The chairman thought that should be consideration. He was speaking for himself. Right. He was not speaking for the entire CPC. The CPC did not make a recommendation at the other meeting. They're going to right. wait till town meeting. But he raised the issue of the moratorium that was in place previously um, as something that worked out well for the town in terms of the implementing the medical marijuana bylaw, zoning bylaw. But no, he was not. I think another member did actually speak up and say he was in favor of moving it forward too. Well, um, my understanding is that one of the reasons for doing this is that we don't know exactly what the legislature is going to do and we won't know before March 13th. Well, and I think that the, the, uh, the point that was raised by the TA at that meeting and, th and that was discussed with us is that this has kind of embedded through the Attorney General's office who would be approving of a bylaw and that this is, if we're intending on taking this route, that this is the route that is advised by them at this point. So um, implementing the bylaw and then putting it to a ballot vote is the, are the avenues that we can pursue now. And Mr. Chairman? Mr. You know, and it, I arrived at the uh, Planning Commission meeting a little bit late, I, right after uh, that was over. Uh, but to me, this is a little bit different than what was uh, proposed before in relation to the medical marijuana and putting moratorium on and taking our time and doing it. And to me, this is very different. You know, what we had was an initiative petition uh, which was passed at the November ballot, uh, which has certain uh, restrictions and uh, options uh, provided uh, through that legislation which passed at the ballot box, not necessarily crafted through uh, the normal course of legislation. Um, and to me, uh, it's, it's very important that we take advantage of those options and opportunities uh, on a timely basis. And uh, in consultation again with uh, Representative Jones and Senator Tai here even at our public meeting, uh, they urged us to proceed in the fashion that we've proposed here, which is to uh, put forth for consideration the, the basic banning of it uh, at the October town meeting again at, on the May ballot. Uh, because the, the legislation that was uh, passed or the ballot question that prevailed in the November ballot uh, requires some tweaking by the legislature, uh, this is the best way that we can uh, express our intent. And I say we meaning the body politic here uh, at town meeting and through the ballot box as to what we really want to see uh, happen in the town of North Reading. I don't see a need for um, a moratorium or delaying this 18 months to, to wait and see what happens. We can always go back and amend the zoning bylaws afterwards if we feel as though um, the community really wants to have recreational marijuana in the community. The sense that I get based on the vote at the ballot box and talking to people, it's recreational marijuana is not what people want to have uh, in the town of North Reading. We have the opportunity. Uh, the board saw fit unanimously to propose this. We asked the Planning Commission to sponsor because of the zoning bylaw. Um, I think at least one member of the commission, when they're at a meeting here, uh, expressed uh, an opinion of potentially postponing it. Uh, to me, <coughs> I think we should stay the course, uh, advocate for it, advocate for the, uh, the change in the zoning bylaw, and it requires a two-thirds vote at the town meeting and see what happens. But uh, based upon input from our legislators and input from town council in consultation with the attorney general's office as far as 
the uncertainty as to how this thing is going to be uh, adjudicated at that level, let's just do it. And we can always go back and change it later on if someone, uh, if the town decides to uh, allow for it. So to me, I think uh, postponing it leaves us uh, vulnerable uh, to something that uh, we may not want. So uh, again, I would urge the, uh, the Planning Commission, and if I were there that evening, I would have done the I would have urged them publicly to uh, reconsider their position of, of uh, not recommending at this particular time but waiting until town meeting. It's pretty, pretty cut and dry, pretty straightforward. So I think we should stay the course, and I think uh, as a board we should uh, recommend uh, publicly and as often as we can before the town meeting uh, that we're in favor of uh, changing the zoning bylaw not to allow recreational marijuana not threading. Mr. Chairman. Mr. President. Yeah, I, I feel the same way somewhat. I, you know, after I left that meeting, I was kind of neutral about it, but I've been thinking a lot about it, and I just feel that the course of one is probably the right course to take based on what I'm hearing as well. But we were very clear to the CPC that if they weren't prepared to support the article and sponsor it on town meeting floor, that the Board of Selectmen would take that over and we would do it. So um, I... I'm almost certain they will not make a decision until on town meeting floor. Mm -hmm. So in that case, how does it work? Do they still sponsor it, in, or do we have to take it over? Whose name is on the article? They are. They are. That's correct. At the, at the request of the selectmen, mm -hmm. they sponsored the article. They'll make a recommendation. The board has made a recommendation, which is in the warrant that should have arrived in your mailboxes over the weekend. They'll report a recommendation uh, in favor or against, or potentially move to alter, which, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, I'm aware that there's some discussion happening here in the town hall relative to the ability to modify the proposed zoning prohibition to be a zoning moratorium. That question has not been answered uh, yet, but that's something that, that we know the Planning Commission is looking at, which would mean action could take place at the March town meeting. Again, we don't have an answer. Within the limits of the four corners. Potentially. Of the which it would be. But uh, my suggestion, if that's the case, Mr. Clear. Chairman, I would uh, want to ensure that the main motion that is made at town meeting is to ensure that the what's put before the public mm. is to ban or prohibit uh, recreational marijuana or not threading and if the Planning Commission wishes to propose an amendment in order to let it come forward as an amendment so I think the main motion should be and if the Planning Commission is not willing to make that motion we need to find out soon enough the board should make the motion uh, to prohibit recreational marijuana and let anybody that wants to stand up offer an amendment Mr. Manapelli. But what we asked to be sponsored was a bylaw implementing a prohibition. A moratorium wouldn't that require a publication, uh, something independently published? In, uh, how would you be able to amend a zoning bylaw on the floor to make it so substantially different than what we asked yeah. them to sponsor? That would be up to the moderator to determine whether or not it's within the four corners yeah. of the article for consideration. That would be a stretch, though. Well, it's substantively different, and doesn't the statute require it to be published substantively with... Uh, I'm not disagreeing with right. you, but it's up to the moderator to make the determination. And he would sure have He would do that with uh, the advice of counsel. And I, my personal opinion is he would be stretching to make that work. Uh, I just can't imagine you could fit it within the four corners of that article. Yeah. Well, a moratorium on... A prohibition isn't a moratorium, like like Mr. O'Leary said, a, a moratorium so we can uh, designate a district and designate, you know, the terms and conditions of the bylaw. It's to, it's. Yeah. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, I think we're <laughs> all. But I mean, substantively, here. you're talking about two completely different things, and it's a zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. It's a zoning bylaw. It's been published in the warrant. Mm -hmm. right. Now, yep. typically, when we read what we're proposing, it has to be ruled within the four corners of that, or it can be passed over, or it can be voted down. But it, it, uh, if or it can be amended to... again within the four corners of and again, if the, the text of the... Yeah, if the amendment were to prohibit it for a period of 18 months, which is less than forever and a day or until they change it again, 
Uh, the, the moderator may deem it to be within the four corners, but it depends on how it's Lord. couched and how it's, uh, and how I it's think, presented. I think we do need to make a decision then because right. we, we, we can take over the sponsorship of it. If they want to propose an independent article on a moratorium, then that's something different, but maybe we need no, to... It's too late for them to propose yeah, it's already another article. It doesn't sound like it from what... Well. It doesn't sound like it from what we're talking about here. Right. So we might as well take over the sponsorship oh. of it. I, I, I think behind the scenes the issue can be resolved before it gets to town meeting, hopefully. So. All right. Who's gonna, is somebody taking the action to do that? The, the do you action, want me to take I, the action to I, do that? I, I thought that it was a majority of the CPC, and I was told tonight that it wasn't. The, the, the majority was just to make a recommendation at town meeting. Town meeting. Right. That's it. It. Was, uh, it was not necessary to offer but a moratorium. If you had to, uh, if you are, uh, if you ask me, I got the sense that the majority is not in favor of that one article. Of the moratorium? Is that new? Of the not prohibition. Not in favor of the one oh, That's okay. I, I'm just I saying. Know, I so mean, I, 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 I don't know if you would go that far, but I, I feel pretty confident based on people I talked to. I've got a system at least two, what you're thinking. But <laughs> so it's not in favor of it, then they can uh, Mr. make Chip. a motion to pass over it, and town meeting will vote one way or the other. And if they vote against passing it over, we go full. Uh, again, I think uh, what we did at our previous meeting when we met with the Planning Commission was to extend the courtesy of requesting them to sponsor an article to effectuate a change which this board sought to have happen. Uh, if they're not in support of that, then I would think that they would uh, uh, accommodate us and allow us to make the main motion. And I think that is what the, probably the administrator should Perfect. convey to the, the we planner. We should make that action. We and, should take uh, that action get some acquiescence and if that's not the case then we it's a race to whoever gets called first at town meeting as to what gets uh, proposed first but it shouldn't have to come to that right the, the merits of the arguments are going to be discussed either way Mr. Manabelli Mr. Gilberto the other side the boy is yep. asking you to do something that I'm confused you asking me? Just to get in touch with Danielle, <laughs> just to get in touch with Danielle, or no. to communicate. No, no, I, I heard the request, but he said Mrs. Manuel Pelle. I That's know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh it was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, you Again, I've been promoted. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mr. yeah, yes, I was writing down the, the note to make sure that I, I caught it exactly, okay. and I will communicate I'm as looking, such. I'm to looking the, right here, Mrs. Manapelli. Yeah. yeah. Motion by in the minutes. Uh, yes, Sorry. I will. I will communicate the message to the town planner. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, Any yeah. other comments regarding the yeah. uh, I just articles? Wanted, I just want to. Sorry. Team. With regard to the marijuana, I just wanted to make sure that I was standing something. Um, and if the CPC does not recommend this, we we can. We can recommend it ourselves. Can, of can course, not, yep. right? So yeah. we're independent bodies. They do not have to favorably recommend it in order to have right. town meeting pass it. You just need two thirds vote. Okay. Well, what you're talking about, though, we asked them to sponsor it, right. and we made it clear: if you choose not to sponsor it, we mm -hmm. will do it. But what you're mentioning now, which really an amendment wasn't discussed at the public hearing the other night, so coming. To, to the to the meeting with a, a an amendment is something totally different than what we asked mm -hmm. that they do. So if they're against it or opposed to the bylaw as it was already published and written, then they can they, they vote should, not to recommend. Or they should, they should sit silent, let a motion be made, a main motion be made by another party, this party, uh, and uh, and then give a recommendation. But it sounds already to us as though they're not intending on, to me, from just from this dialogue. Yeah. Again, I didn't get that from the meeting, but I mean, uh, you know. But we made it clear that we are we feel that strongly about it that we would 
we would take that action. So they won't be shocked when the town administrator makes that request to the planning department. And hopefully they'll uh, give you an answer pretty soon so we can go ahead and take the action prior to, make sure the public knows so it doesn't turn into any drama on town meeting floor. Mr. Yule. Yeah, uh, and as I recall, we gave them a charge to, to uh, uh, come up with, with, with the, the wording for the Bible, I believe. Is what I'm looking here, their wording, did, did they put this together or Council. Uh, on the warrant? Mr. Chairman, through you, the, the warrant article wording reflects the request of the selectmen uh, made to the CPC and developed in conjunction with town council. So they the CPC did not put this together? They worked with town council to put it together, yes. Oh, and, okay. and, it, and I can tell you that council was here for the discussion, if I recall, and council was aware of what was requested. And when we reviewed the article with the planner, it, it achieved what the goal requested. So th they, have a f they have sponsored the article, and it is in the, the warrant. I think the issue is whether they're prepared to recommend or not. Okay. And I think we, we, also, we also worded it that evening when we asked them to sponsor. I mean, it was pretty well, it's pretty direct and clear. <laughs> you know, this, this one isn't like zoning for a dispensary. And this is pretty, it's just a ban on it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion on the Warren articles? When will we hear back, Mr. Chairman, then, on what they're intending to do? Through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd have to check with the planner as to their meeting schedule. Um, I'm not sure if they have a meeting this week or, or, or next, um, but uh, they, may, they, may, they, may, they may have a meeting. We'll ask them to post a meeting jointly with the board when the uh, Warren article hearing comes up next Monday night, that's an opportunity to hear from them as well. So I, I would presume we can get some sort of an indication from them at that Warren article hearing, if not the day after. So you're recommending inviting them? To I, I think we should, yes. Mr. Yule. Yes, uh, with, uh, on a different uh, Warren article on the construction of the facilities at uh, Arthur J. Kenny Field, I, I'd like to know it doesn't look like it, like it in this from what I'm seeing here, but I'd like to know if the, the committee is going to come forward with two options, one on a need basis and one on a preferred basis, as far as the facility is concerned. Mr. O'Leary. My guess is we'll come up with a proposal. I don't think there'll be an alternative necessarily. I think we'll be prepared, maybe, somewhat, pre somewhat prepared for, for an alternative, but uh, we're going to come up with a proposal and a recommendation, uh, which at this particular point in time would not include retrofitting the existing building, if that's where you're going. Yeah, I would assume it would I would assume not, that's yes. where you're going, right. That, that's, that, right. That, that's so where going. the proposal, it would be a, a, a positive. On a need basis. I don't it, care it what be, it is. It would be a, propo a positive proposal to meet the guidelines and needs uh, as established by what we have to do to, to comply with uh, state requirements, which would not include retrofitting the existing team building. Right. The lower cost approach they'd be going to. Correct. And, and more costly. Correct. Okay. And preferred. Okay. And that, 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 that's fine. So, but you said uh, also that uh, you are prepared well, we, what we have is some preliminary numbers, early preliminary numbers that said that it would fit within the $450,000 that the administration has recommended uh, be utilized to come in compliance with the state regulations, which would involve retrofitting the existing facility that's currently standing there today. Right. So it's not the recommendation of the Athletic Facilities Subcommittee, not right. yet the recommendation of uh, the school administration and the school committee has already taken a public vote and stating that they would not allow the facility to be retrofitted at this time. They would not allow it even if it was voted? Because it's a school facility. It's right. a school facility right now. And they said they do not want it to happen. So they were unanimous in their position that they were not in favor of mm -hmm. doing that. So if someone in the town in the meeting would come up with a 
an alternative recommendation. Um, Town meeting can take a vote, but it can't happen without the approval of the school committee. Much like if we, if someone came up with a proposal to, okay. you know, put a fire station, you know, at the tail end of this building, doesn't mean that the administration here and the board have to support and spend the money to do it. So then you're saying that if it were not approved, then they'd have no bathrooms. I don't know that. I'm just telling you okay. what the recommendations and what they are at this particular point and where it all stands. Okay. Steve, is uh, is there a dollar amount? Set yet, or are they still waiting? Not yet, still waiting for it. And in the dollar amount that they request, will there be options in the bid? Yes, there'll be additional options to expand uh, beyond compliance with the state regulation in order to allow for a new structure to be retrofitted with a future concession stand. But it's not going to build the concession stand. It will pour the foundation to the infrastructure to have it uh, plumbed in order to meet the needs at a future date as an add on to the bid. Thank you. Uh, any other questions regarding the uh, bathroom model? Just a quick one, and probably just a follow-up. Um, so that what you showed us in the presentation was that concrete, that concrete to build later, and the cost associated with the, what what was needed there, which is the bathrooms, right? right. That's what we need. Two-phased approach, right? I was confused as to whether it was a footing or a slab. There's probably not much difference. Not much difference. Right. Yeah. yeah, not much difference. In other words, it has to go below the frost line. So the footing would be poured, uh, would be filled with a with concrete. So it basically would be a slab, but included in the slab would be the necessary plumbing in order to allow for uh, future expansion and tie-in for a concession stand. Okay. Any other questions regarding any of the articles from March 13th? Okay. With that, then the next item on our agenda is. Uh, oh, we got we we'll have 10 minutes, so let's see what else we can cover. Uh, returning Ch to open session, sign <laughs> purchase and sale agreement for Pute Homes. M Mr. Chairman. We need executive session first for that? Or? We do, but uh, for the public edification, I don't expect to recommend a vote on that article, uh, or on that item, nor do I expect to recommend a vote right. on item number 11, which is the ratification of the memorandum of agreement with the North Reading Library staff. So mm -hmm. neither one of these two. Therefore, the only thing left is town administrator's report and all the new business. So why don't we do that? And Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, I mean, certainly out of, out of courtesy to any member who may wish to report their old and new business before the executive session, if the board wanted to do old and new business first, that, and that would be fine with me in case we don't get through the TA report, which is lengthy. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking that you know, we kind of scheduled approximately a couple of hours for our executive session. Now there's no reason to, with the exception of town administrator's report and all the new business, to uh, go back into regular sessions. Uh, I'm not disagreeing. I'm, I'm merely suggesting that you may wish to consider old and new business first, and then town in, in case we don't get the town administrator's report oh, before oh, I'm 8 o'clock. Just can I just I comment, <coughs> Mr. Prisco, on the um, purchase and sale? We are meeting Friday. Friday morning, so I hope by Please Friday. Week. Pulte, our uh, sales um, commercial sales broker, town administrator, myself, and our legal counsel, John Ike, and the town planner. And the town planner. Are there any major issues, Michael, or it's just no time? Not really. It's been just time. It, it's you got a lot of people, mm -hmm. and everybody's schedules have been a little hectic. So I think, but the progress has been very good so far. Very reasonable comments have been flying back and forth and now this is going to be the first time since we've done a lot of comments through electronic media back and forth to sit across the table and make sure we understand some of the paragraphs need some clarification and hopefully at the next board of select meeting we'll be in a better position to present this and if we can get it done before then it'll be posted so you guys can read it in advance and but I feel very confident we're going to be prepared for March 13th no problem at all. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Mike. So on Friday, you're going to sign the agreement? No. 
No, we don't. We're not signing the agreement. We're just. We're going to complete the construction of the purchase and sale. Oh, okay. Once we get it in that format, we'll submit it. The board of selectmen, you guys will see it, then we'll come here. I believe the process is we have a quick discussion on it. We vote it. You we sign it. Then we. Then we. Is it target to have that on our agenda next Monday night? Well, that's Did one of the reasons I. That was going to be the last thing I asked you is make sure that we put this on the agenda for our next meeting, and uh, and then once we go, my understanding is we sign it before we go to March 13th special town meeting. So we can go to the special town meeting. We can make sure when we present those zoning changes that they understand that we have a purchase and sale in place. So, but if we if it gets voted down, then the purchase and sale is uh, null and void. Town administrator may want to add some more to that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just only would add that this is, you know, obviously a, com a complex transaction, a significant trans transaction in terms of its size. There are very productive discussions that are happening. However, if we don't believe that we've resolved things to the point where there's a document that everyone is in 100% agreement on for March 6th, there's a possibility that we may be requesting a meeting between the March 6th and the March 13th right, right. Uh, town meeting for approval. And it uh, wouldn't necessarily be uh, unusual per se. I, I recall having a special meeting to, this, to side, sign the LDA for the Berry property when we bought it mm -hmm. uh, from DCAM. Um, you know, we'll try to avoid that, but I just ask members to keep that in mind and we'll certainly work with the availability members if we need to schedule such a meeting between the 6th and the 13th. We're gonna work as hard as we can to avoid that. Anything else, Michael? Nope. Mr. Matt Pelley. What's that, old new business? Yes. Is that what yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. Um, just since our last meeting, some, um, let's put it this way, how can I put it? So, uh, some reality checks for me have occurred, you know, and as I uh, reflect on a long life that individuals such as my mother enjoyed, you know, 96 plus years, uh, just since our last meeting, uh, some members of our community relatives of members of our community, you know, have passed along. And it's, you know, we have a 56-year-old uh, mother of, of two boys, uh, who, the same age as my sons, whom I shared uh, many, a, many a time along the sidelines and, and socially with, uh, you know, a mother, a wife, sister, daughter, friend, uh, you know, passed away. A 42-year-old father of a six-year-old, husband, son, brother, friend, and someone that I considered to be a potential future leader for this community, again, passed away suddenly. 25-year-old uh, young man uh, by a community who I had uh, the pleasure of, of coaching in Little League, a uh, terrific young man who was the father of an eight-month-old, a son and a friend, uh, passed away. Uh, a neighbor's 71-year-old mother you know, suffering from Alzheimer's, uh, wife, grandmother, sister, uh, passed away. And a 35-year-old uh, father of a seven and a five-year-old, again, loving husband, son, brother, son-in-law, and friend, uh, passed away. So again, as I reflected in the past couple of weeks, uh, and it happens, it has happened a few times, I guess, during my, my lifetime. Um, it's a real reality check as to, you know, what's important. And uh, you know, well, my mother was here for 96 years, you know, in the whole scheme of things, it's a very short period of time. And we're all here for a short period of time, and um, all of us in our own way uh, make contributions and have an impact on others and on our community. And I would just, uh, or just to reflect a little bit more on that and uh, keep things in perspective. And you know, as we uh, banter about with each other and uh, agree or disagree on different issues, you know, let's really, really keep it, uh, keep it in check and uh, keep what's important, uh, primary and foremost. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Life is short. 
It certainly is. Uh, I just want to mention to the board that uh, I'd like to, uh, we're in a number crunch, but this has to be done uh, this month. The early at March, the earlier the better. I'd like to schedule a midweek executive session just to review input for the uh, TA's contract. Uh, his contract uh, runs out at the end of June, and uh, I don't think there's any doubt of any of the board members in terms of wanting to uh, set a new contract. We've got some input, we've got some. Bob Collins has provided some information on the local, uh, and then Allison had provided me earlier on communities like ours to, to look at the salary structure, etc. So I need some input so that when I sit down and we negotiate a contract, a new contract with the town administrator, that everybody's on board. So that's one thing uh, that I'd like to get done soon, and I'll be sending out the TA uh, review forms probably sometime next week and with a schedule and I'd like to see if we can kind of keep to the schedule so that uh, we can get that done in a timely fashion too. And that's really all I have. It's important, right? absolutely. I'll pick some, uh, well maybe I should say before we uh, move on, uh, are there any I'm thinking like a Thursday evening, spend an hour, maybe at 7 o'clock. And if so, can we pick a date? I know we're in... Uh, in March, you're talking about, right? Yes, I mean, you know, we're in a crunch time because <laughs> we got the meeting... Would for the next two Mondays. Mr. Yes. Chair, would March 9th be too soon to do I it? I was thinking March 9th. Only reason why is if we um, run into any more snags on the purchase and sale, that would actually be a really good date for us to meet to sign the purchase and sale if we if we happen to miss the sixth meeting. That falls right in line with our... That would be perfect, actually. About at 7 o'clock? Um, I won't be here for that. I'm... I'm I'm actually going. You're away. Uh, no, I'm on trial for the next that that following day and the following week. So. Um, so the ninth, the ninth, you can't make yeah, it, or is it too early? Yeah, week. Is that the same time? Yeah, and we already meet it on the sixth, right? Yeah. That week. Yes. Mr. Mister is just looking for a few hours of our time to focus on the town administration. And what yeah, Michael uh, is saying, if we can't get. But we're also on the 13th is the town meeting as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if so I'm out. I'm kind of out straight myself for those, other than what we've already dedicated to, to, you know. So maybe you should, can meet without me, and I'll give you. I can. I'll with the information I've collected prior to the meeting. Okay. I mean. Well, on the purchase and sale, we'd have to just make sure you have an opportunity. To Well, the ninth for the purchase and sale is only contingency in case. I feel confident we'll have it for the sixth, but if you know we don't. Well, we thought we were going to have it tonight too, so you never know what's going to come up, right? And it's not like a five-page document. No, the week's just going too fast. That's the problem. Yeah. So can we tentatively schedule a meeting for seven o'clock? It'll be a regular session followed by an executive session, just in case we need the uh, regular session. March time. And shot of any. Uh, oh, where did Michael go? He stepped up. He stepped up because we were talking oh, about it. Well. So, Mike? <laughs> Come on down. He has ears. I'm just trying to set a schedule, Michael. You didn't have to leave. Uh, we're going to. We're scheduling a meeting for the 9th at 7 o'clock. And we'll start with a regular session if we need it as it relates to uh, the Berry property. Is there anything else in case it doesn't get done on the 6th?
be at 7 p.m. Yeah, Hopefully. I'm, I'm not immediately aware of any conflict for mm -hmm. a meeting uh, for that evening taking place. Uh, I know the Board of Appeals would be the most likely board to be meeting, but they are meeting the Thursday before on the 2nd. Do they so meet here? They generally meet in this room, but we they're not. In another room. If, if that were the case, we would use another room. That's okay. correct. But I expect we'll be able to find a meeting room if this room okay. is not available for some reason. All right. That's all I have, and it's 8 o'clock, a couple minutes after. The next item on our agenda is vote to sell townhome land, map 17, parcel 1. I believe there's a hearing that? notice. My understanding is we need to agree to set a price for this transaction. That's correct, yes. So uh, first, uh, there may be a desire to read the hearing notice, which mm -hmm. uh, it was provided. Okay. It's in the back. Do you have it or? No. It's in the packet, I think. It is. No problem. The Board of Selectmen shall be considering for sale the following parcel of town-owned land on Monday, February 27, 2017, at 8 p.m. in room 14 of the Town Hall, 235 North Street, North Reading, Massachusetts. Any parties interested in the potential sale and subsequent private ownership of this parcel should plan on attending. It's map 17, parcel 1, square footage 3,963 square feet, location 8 Acres Boulevard. Um, lot information, the overlay district, there is none. It's not in the Aquifer Protection dis District. Frontage, not applicable. Frontage amount, none. Not within 100 feet of wetlands, no environmentally sensitive area, no accepted street is not applicable, it's not a buildable lot, it's not buildable because there's not enough square footage, it's residence aid zoning. I, I think I went into a different page. No, that's great. So. Is that it? So, Mr. Chairman, through you, mm -hmm. we've noticed this as a, as a public uh, hearing as required under the town's bylaws. And uh, Mr. Kogan is here. He's uh, the petitioner uh, going back some period of time. We've complied with the bylaw and the board's policy with regard to requesting comments from boards and commissions relative to the property um, and provided a, an appropriate window for response. Uh, again, also, Public, publicly noticing this hearing and uh, effectively it appears that there's no identified municipal use for this parcel of land which abuts Mr. Kogan's property and the board uh, is in a position based on the advice of Attorney Coppola to sell the property to Mr. Kogan uh, should it so desire. Um, for informational purposes we provided a copy of the assessor's card which shows the valuation of the property and the address as well as uh, an image that shows the location of the property, which I can pull up on the screen here for those who might be watching in the audience. And we basically went on the board's previous use of a motion that uh, allows the board to elect certain criteria for the conveyance, uh, including any restrictions and setting the price for the property. So that the board would be able to make an informed decision. We spoke with Attorney Coppola, who informed us that his fees to sell the land would be in the approximate range of $1,000 to $1,500 property is assessed at $39,900 and has frontage on a paper street. To my knowledge, has not been constructed uh, and again abuts Mr. Kogan's property. And we have not received any additional inquiry relative to the property from any other property owner. And that description and map which we've reviewed in the past is in the package. I just want to make sure I'm looking, Mr. Chairman. I want to make sure I'm looking at the correct, correct it's map here. You said lot one. It's those. Yeah, a lot. I see that here. I just want to make sure this is the right one. Off of Wadsworth Road, or yeah, 
of a Wandsworth Road. Is that the one? I see a number one, then the, I the, see through you. Through you, Mr. Chairman, the property actually has an address on Acres Boulevard, as I understand it, which is the uh, so-called Paper Street. We've put up a map on the uh, television and on the uh, oh, the projection okay. that shows the parcel. No, the parcel in yellow is the town-owned land that's at que that's in question this evening, and the parcel uh, covered, uh, outlined in orange, is Mr. Cogan's property. And I won't speak for him. He certainly can request to speak to the board if he'd like, but I believe he's indicated that he does not intend to create a buildable lot. However, he is considering the construction of an accessory structure such as a garage or a shed, if I recall from his comments correctly. Yes. Kate has a question, Bob. Yes, Kate. I just have a quick, maybe we can scroll, but it's the value of the land is 39.9, even though it's non-buildable and vacant lot. I think we're looking at a formulaic value based on the square footage and the fact that it's not buildable but does have some limited frontage on a street that has not been constructed. My understanding is that the board has historically n not utilized that as a, a value when setting Sale the value to convey. Right. Okay. We, we had a, we, <laughs> we, meaning the board had a previous policy a few years back that required us, as a matter of policy, to advertise for a minimum bid of the assessed value, which didn't make an awful lot of sense at all. And a lot of, a lot of these uh, small, non-buildable lots, because as the town administrator indicated, there's some sort of a, a formula that's utilized by the assessors, uh, and appropriately so, to place the value on them. But the true value is really only to the direct abutter. It's non-buildable. Uh, the board has been very careful in ensuring that uh, that they be conjoined with the parcel next to it, and that it doesn't create another buildable lot. And for those that are buildable, we get more money for. It. And this is uh, just again in keeping with uh, our practice and policy of trying to get stuff back on the back on the tax rolls and encouraging people to do it. So a few years back, the board amended their policy and basically, uh, in cases such as this, looking to just cover the costs of conveyance that the town would expend in order to get it to a new owner. And we're talking about just under 4,000 square feet. Yes, Jim. Yeah, and to, to echo something I think that Steve was saying is that we've been, we've been working on this now at least since my first term uh, some years ago. So Since I think 1988. Been, yeah. What? Since 1988. Well, no, but I mean, we, no, 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 no. We, so we, no, 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 we made the change. Years ago, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we made the change during that time right. to, to be more practical in what we were trying to accomplish. Correct. Okay, so I recall that. I, I do have a question. So it's parcel one. Uh, what's the story with parcel 77? Uh, it looks like there's a structure on there. Someone else's land. Is that somebody else's land? Another house. Mr. Kogan probably knows it better than I do, but I believe that's a separate house lot with frontage yeah, on Wadsworth. Yeah. yeah. And I believe he, he talked about parceling off a portion of his property yes. Yes. and selling it to his neighbor. Mm. Yes. So basically making his a, a rectangle. Oh, I see. That's right. I recall that. Yeah. swapping it off, yeah. basically, covering his costs. And, and Mr. Chairman, through you, in the interest of full disclosure, I believe Mr. Kogan has previously appeared before the board and yeah. been presented an opportunity for this property. And for whatever reason, at the time, timing wasn't right. But now I believe the timing is right, as I yeah. understand it. Yes. yes. Mr. Chairman. Bob, Bob Mr. Prisco. So going back to, the, you know, a few years ago when we've done this the last, we would typically require the sale price to be our, to cover all our costs my understanding right legal any closing costs etc and then put on some terms and conditions and do we have those terms and conditions uh, everybody has them in front of them there uh, we are five that we've right and typically we've chosen the term and condition that does restrict you from any uh, ability to subdivide the property in the future so I just want to make sure that you are clear on that, you're comfortable with that. That's why I asked. Yes. Yes, I mean, I understand that. And, but that's why when I had written a letter to the town administrator, I was expressing it would be in my interest in sort of 
sort of cost sharing, and I don't really have any use for the property behind 77. I haven't agreed to sell the land or anything like that, but I just wanted to have the ability to say, look, if I'm gonna purchase from the town approximately 4,000 square feet, right behind his house, if you see, it's about the same piece right. in size. Right. I, I would like to end up with a more conforming shape lot, and I don't necessarily need the property behind my neighbor's house. It's not like I'm going to, in that house as well, has a long history of just uh, sort of being built on a very small lot. And yeah. that home is basically right built right on the lot line. So it's, it, it's, it's already use, useless land for myself, so. Okay. I just asked for the ability to say, hey, if I can subdivide that piece off, sort of an equal square footage for an equal square footage, it could work for me. Mr. Gilberto, do you have a uh, recommendation? <coughs> Are you recommending a sales price? Uh, excuse on, me, uh, Bob. Uh, what? Kate, that's a question. I don't know if it, well, I don't I don't know if, if anyone remembers, but what did we sell Magnolia for? We did the we rolled the cost in and everything, but we yeah. came up with yeah. a nominal well, sum, we right? We purchased that. Yeah, so yeah, that one there. We had a purchase price on, so we had to we it's covered our cost for the purchase price. I think it was like eleven, wasn't it? Eleven. Yeah. And they, it was a different situation. It was a little different situation. I mean, this we probably got from tax title somewhere forty plus years ago or more. Uh, that one there, we actually acquired oh, through so eminent we were domain to get with our Eisenhower, money back. Yeah. Okay. Eisenhower Park. Park is where, where we acquired yes. that and had a had a fixed cost associated. Mm -hmm. with okay, it. all right. So basically, what we're doing is covering our costs and getting it back on the tax. Rate. Okay. Mr. Gilbert, do you have a recommendation on that? With regard to the cost? Yes. Uh, so it, we've been, been provided an estimate with a range between one thousand and fifteen hundred dollars. I, I would suggest that it be approved at an amount not to exceed one thousand five hundred dollars and that would be the that would effectively recover the anticipated costs for the conveyance if that's the board's desire you said that was the quote for the fee though for the uh, council's fee the, 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 the is that re recording costs everything is included right. in that's that? my understanding yes as provided yeah, by attorney Capola. Yeah. yeah that's how we've done it in the past. but if you're saying Oh, I see. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. And Can I make a motion? Yeah. For the record, okay. if, it, if it helps, we provided a copy of the previous meeting minutes from 2011 mm -hmm. in which the restrictions that were voted were that the property could not be used in and of itself as a separate building lot and that no building or structure of any kind shall be erected or maintained on the premises unless the premises is combined with adjoining, adjoining and said adjoining land already meets the minimum requirements for the town of North Reading for a separate building lot. So again, I'm just reporting the previous restrictions that we voted. I don't know that the board wishes to follow with those same restrictions. What was that? Well, I have those in this um, Yeah, motion. I'm just trying to think what that would do. Uh, and you seem to have done it for each of them. I'm not. Right. Yeah, typically, we've gone with number three option on all the ones that I've been involved with. But this is not, this isn't, we're not actually saying we're going to sell it to Mr. Kogan. We're just saying that's the minimum fixed auction. And so who's doing the auction, the attorney? This is my understanding of how it's been conducted in the past, yes. Yeah, we have, it has to go to public auction. So who else would have interest other than generally a director butter? Someone who might want to park his boat there, but it might not be in the town's best interest to have someone park their boat there. We generally okay. sell it to whatever would be in the best public interest, which would allow for, you know, expansion of septic systems and to a direct abutter and straighten out the other lot over here, and that's what the wishes are, and the stated intent. But it still has to go to public auction. Okay. And there's a minimum sale price? Minimum bid. bid. Actually, the minimum would be fifteen hundred dollars, or that the board wished to set it lower than that. It could. What's the minimum? Okay. Could set it at a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars. I mean, it's the, the decision of the board. We've been provided a range. It, it will depend upon the nuances of the review and the closing, but we don't have a, a fixed cost. So I, I mean, if um, uh, Jeff has a question. Jeff, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
when this uh, property becomes part of 76, I guess that's what it's going to be, um, he cannot build on it, build any structure on that? That would be that can. A garage or something like that? If the board were to convey it without any restrictions, he could potentially build on it. So the, the board needs to determine. Yeah, we have restrictions. We it have a no, it, it says it yeah. says if his his house already that's already on the parcel right. meets the minimum requirements, which so he joins right. it with that land, then he can go ahead and right. build right. in that area, right? As long as he meets the setbacks and so forth. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. If we but independently, three. you can't build a house on number one. You right. can't build right. a garage or a you know structure on it. But if his land already is, and he has a house already there, you know, and a pretty sizable parcel, well, in comparison to one in 77, so. So, do we have to vote then on the minimum bid amount, or should we, or should yes. I just make a motion? Yes and yes. My understanding is the board has historically set the minimum bid yes. number and put the restrictions on the okay. auction. So, should I make a motion? Let's see your motion. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to sell by auction town owned land designated as Map 17 Parcel 1, located at 8 Acres Boulevard, in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 60, Section 77B, at a minimum bid price of $1,500, buyer, successful bidder to pay all fees, costs, and expenses associated with this conveyance subject to the following restrictions. One, not to be used in and of itself as a separate building lot. Two, the premises, the premises shall not be used to satisfy minimum zoning or health code requirements for the construction on or use of any building on adjoining land. Three, no building or other structure of any kind shall be erected or maintained on the premises unless the premises is combined with adjoining and said adjoining land already meets the mi minimum requirements of the town of North Reading for a separate building lot. Four, no building or other structure of any kind shall be erected or maintained on the premises. Five, to waive the provisions of Mass General Laws Chapter 40A Section 6 pursuant to its ninth paragraph. Mr. Ch Generally, we, we, it's a menu, and you, it's a la carte. Right. Yeah, we don't necessarily have to do all. We can pick. Oh, so I'm we, sorry. Oh, that's why you would. That's why you. Would <laughs> you just go to number three. Go to number three. I don't know, it's number three or number one. I'm sorry. Well, it's been both historically. We, we've thought. done both. I, I, we've done both. One and one and two. <laughs> one and three. I, I was. It seemed like it was separating it out in parcels, and that's why I. All right, one and two. Okay, I'm sorry. One and three. I withdraw my motion. No, no, we're amending it. I'm sorry. Let's strike number. I'm sorry. Strike number two, four, and five. I meant to read just number one and three. I second the motion. <laughs> second by Mr. Priscilla. Sorry about that. Fine. Further discussion on the motion. Right. On the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Excuse me, did we set a price? Yes. Oh, Not too good. That was in the motion. Three, right? yeah. yes. I just I struck just one. I just struck one and three. Good luck. Okay. I don't know where I am now. <laughs> <laughs> Town administrator will help you out. Oh, my goodness. You're in good shape. Sorry, sorry. You got a good guys. deal. So That's what you got. Uh, you can excuse yourself. Are we not going to have any discussion? General collective bargaining not related to health insurance right. and uh, land transaction very briefly relative to pool tape homes. Okay. It will be brief, but all right, so we're going to do that first. I would suggest that we do that first. Okay. That's so funny. Too long of a day. I'm not processing, you know. Thank you. Okay, Phil, we will be entering into executive session, so we're going to close our regular meeting and we will not be coming back. Okay, so. So you got an early night. You got an early night. We'll, we'll give you five minutes to wrap it up.